Ayurvedic medicine, it comes from ancient India. Ancient India, uh, they have the Vedas, which means translates into knowledge. And what it is, it's eight, it's uh, eight aspects of life that gives one the complete knowledge of life. Uh, for example, knowledge of well of health is one of the eight. Knowledge of weapons, Shastravidya, et cetera, et cetera. So once the ancient uh, you know, yogis and rishis and those who knew knowledge of God created the Vedas, which has multiple authors. One of those is Ayurveda. So when I and uh, when I when I went down there and I, my goal was to try to um, learn about it. So the first thing to know is that upon colonization, we were colonized as a as a really a subcontinent with many different kingdoms as the history. Long story short, when we get colonized by the British, they made three, they did many things of which three things stand out. Number one, India was no longer allowed to export any goods and services. So that means that we couldn't sell anything. We had to buy from the colonizer. You fast forward, that makes us poor and them rich. And that's what happens across the globe as well. Second thing is you're not allowed to learn martial arts. Once you get colonized, they don't want you to know how to defend yourself for obvious reasons. And then the third thing, was the all of the practitioners of Ayurvedic medicine was either killed or had their hands chopped off to at least as many of them as they could, and they want and they kind of took that system of healing and tried to put it to the you know suppress it, and we were introduced more so with a Western system of healing. So with that history and understanding of um, Ayurvedic medicine and pra practice. Uh, and also a thing to know is that Ayurvedic medicine is connected to the martial arts. So a lot of times the people uh, who know the healing also know martial arts and Kalari Payatu is the name of what they call the first martial art. And the origin of that is a prince, he went in, into the jungles and he observed seven different animals and how they protected and defended themselves. And the story goes that he then came and started traveling and started teaching other people. And that's how martial arts spread to other parts of Asia. In my mind's eye, martial arts is natural. So from my personal perspective, Mother Africa and all the different places that were, uh, you know, all across the earth must have had their own system of martial arts. But, you know, a lot of modern martial artists would say that that is the original martial art. But in my mind, obviously, there were others as well. and Each should get their credit. So that being said, when the oppression happens, um, then in my mind, what I realized is they also started to give a lot of fake false, like they would pay people to, to be false practitioners to cast doubt on it. So with all this type of uh, background, at this point in time, you don't learn it from an institution for real. There are like four major institutions. I don't want to speak on how authentic or unauthentic they are because I don't know, but I do know that it was passed from like father to to the children, you know, men and women. And I, I believe that equality of men and women is a very important part of the ancient, uh, you know, the women trained in martial arts and all that. So it goes from like father to children or mother to children, like families. So if you happen to come across a family who kept that tradition alive, you got to kind of seek those people out in order to really get to it for real. So it's, it's not like you you pull up in Kerala and you get to, you know, go and learn it. You know, it's, there's also like, you know, you gotta, uh, there's with good reason, you know, there's there, the, the mentality of the people in India in that part of India is very peaceful, very loving, very sharing. But I think with all due respect and understanding too, I don't, I'm not so sure they just share it with everyone because they want to know like what is being used for now, that being said, I think some of that is mixed in with my personal understanding. So I'm trying my best not to do that. But I think within there is a little bit of my own understanding that I'm trying my best not to do. So moving forward, uh, Ayurveda sits on this basic fundamental understanding of this. Like my goal was to go there, figure out, learn it and bring it back to New Jersey and practice it. At least go there and figure out where I could go learn it from. The conclusion of what I understood, you cannot go to India in Kerala, learn what they're doing and come back to New Jersey and use it. And the reason why is because it's based upon the fact that you have to be in touch with the nature of wherever you're from. So they do have like, you know, system of healing. 
that includes a lot of modern medicine is natural. So if you break a bone and you set a bone into its right place, that's natural as it gets. If, you know, a lot of surgeries are just natural. If you have, uh, you know, just basic things. If you have um, a lot of emergency medicine, it's natural. Now, um, with that being said, they also have other natural ways and techniques to heal. So you have to know the area in the environment of where you're from. So if you're from Cali or you're from New Jersey, or you're from Compton, California, you have to know the natural healing plants from your indigenous to your area. You have to know the fruits and vegetables that's seasonal to your area. If you're from South Jersey, you're from Philly, you're from wherever you're from, point being is you have to know and be in touch with the nature and the natural things from your own area. Uh, there are certain th principles that are transfer transferable, but uh, you know, I don't have deep, deep knowledge and understanding of the of the way of healing, but that's the basic concept. And the basic concept is really based on balance. It's based upon balance of what you put into your body. It's eliminating the toxins from your body. Um, and really you eat very simple, very clean food as a vegetarian that gets like the, the fresh fruits and, and vegetables of the region, drinking a lot of water, eating light, healthy foods is definitely a place where you start. And then they have their different words for the balancing energies. There's three different balancing uh, substances. Each food group actually has its own type of energy. For example, you know, like Sattvic, without getting into the details, um, each type of food has its own energy, like an onion has a different type of an energy than a strawberry, for example. So understanding the profound effects on the body and understanding what type of balance you have, they have their techniques of seeing where your imbalance is and then restoring that balance. So in a, in a big part of the Western medicine, it's like when you get sick, they introduce something into your body, a medicine. I think in a lot of the Ayurvedic concept is they try to help you eliminate a toxin from your body. And so there's differences in, you know, those types of things. Other uh, systems of healing like cupping. I know the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to do stuff like that. You know, certain um, concepts of bloodletting that I don't know much about, so I don't want to be the representative for but it definitely made a lot of sense to me. There was different points in the body where if you let blood out from this particular place, you could control exactly what gets let out and what stays in. And that makes sense to me, but I don't really have deep knowledge of it. That makes sense like an autoimmune disease and things of that nature. We do use bloodletting for like uh, excess platelets. Excess platelets, that's a standard therapy for that. And there are certain other things like hemochromos uh, hemochromatosis, extra iron, but um, that concept can be used and transferable to other things. So in a nutshell, that's a basic idea of Ayurveda with a very quick uh, idea like cupping, which is more so Arabic, I would say.